Hey everybody, my name is Krisha Erbe, I'm the creator of Threlt, and today I'd like to give you a tour on the upcoming version of Threlt, which is version 6, and what it's like to work with it. Let's start out with the basics. What even is Threlt? Threlt is a framework and an ecosystem that allows you to develop 3.js apps in a Svelte native way. Most of you will probably know 3.js, uh, it's a popular JavaScript 3D library. Now, what benefits does using Threlt or a regular native vanilla, whatever you want to call it, 3.js have? For the sake of comparison, here's what we're used to when we work with the DOM and DOM elements. We benefit from declarative markup style, uh, which is just very convenient to use. Um, and therefore, we mostly don't care about the underlying rendering or otherwise functional nuances. It's also therefore easy to maintain for larger apps. We don't need to clean up after ourselves, we just remove elements. And we get resource caching out of the box with images, videos and other elements like audio and stuff like that. Now, let's see how 3.js holds up to that. There is no declarative uh, markup style to it, but it's still convenient and it has a well-defined API. Uh, from my experience, it's hard to maintain for large apps and we sometimes need to take care about how rendering is done actually, um, although most of it is abstracted away. Um, we do need to clean up after ourselves, so if we uh, remove something, we need to dispose resources, for example, and there is no such thing as caching out of the box, because resources not only need to be loaded, but also passed and uploaded to the GPU. Threlt aims to tackle most of these issues with the help of Svelte. With Threlt, we do get declarative markup for everything that 3.js has to offer. It's easy to maintain and reason about. We still need to take care of rendering sometimes for advanced use cases, but there are reasonable defaults in place. And because Svelte components have something called a lifecycle, we can use that lifecycle to automatically dispose unused resources. We also benefit from an app-wide resource caching, which is a huge performance boost for larger Threlt apps. To give you an idea of what's possible using Threlt, let's build a quick example together. Okay, so let's assume there is a Threlt conference happening later this year. To engage people to come to the conference, we are issuing digital tickets, but these tickets, they will have like a physical appearance of some sorts, kind of like the digital equivalent of a regular ticket. And because it's about technology, it's supposed to look uh, fancy and futuristic. So we go for a dark blue-ish purple palette and uh, make it shiny and reflective. So what we are looking at here is a bare bones SvelteKit app. I just in initialized it uh, using the skeleton project option together with uh, TypeScript, uh, Pretty and ESLint and uh, I added Tailwind. That's about it. And I added like a bare bones page, which uh, looks like this. And here in the middle, there's this graphics missing that we, that I'd like to implement with you. We first need to install Threlt. And for that, let's check out the new Threlt website. This is the new website of uh, Threlt 6. And if we jump to documentation, and then installation, we see that we get to choose the packages that we actually want to use. And uh, of course, we cannot use Threat without Threat Core. But uh, for this example, we are also using Threat Extras, which is a library uh, um, with useful abstractions on top of 3.js classes that, um, or other classes actually. Uh, that we can use to our advantage. And we also want to use TypeScript, so we install the 3.js types as well. We copy the install command and install the packages. Also what we do is um, we need to adapt the Vite configuration. So we copy that snippet over to here and we are all set up. Let's jump into the page. This is the page we're looking at and um, this is how it looks now. And here we want to display our digital ticket. 
So um, we have this diff here, which spans basically the whole viewport and we want to use that. So um, we are going to place the canvas element here and or the canvas component actually, it's not the canvas element. The canvas component sets up the basics of, of our whole app. Um, it uh, creates a renderer for us. It uh, sets uh, sensible defaults. It sets up all the context stuff that's happening because um, these components that we use with uh, Threat cannot rely on like the, the hierarchy of the DOM. We have to set that up as uh, ourselves. So basically Threat has to set that up for us and it relies heavily on the context, uh, on the context API of Svelte. And therefore, it's important to keep in mind that this component is the root of our context. And therefore, everything we do needs to be a child of this component. The easiest way to uh, make sure that we are always acting in the, in the context of this component is to create a new Svelte component, which is called, we are, I call it always uh, scene or most of the times I call it scene and we'll just put it here. So as long as we are in this scene component here, we are uh, acting in the context of our Threat app. Now the canvas component automatically resizes to fit the parent element. In this case, the diff that spans our whole viewport. Well, let's start out with uh, something like a Hello World in 3.js. That is a camera uh, and a cube. And we see how we can use props to transform or modify the attributes of our cube or our camera. The first thing we are going to do is implement our camera. Uh, Threlt already provides a default camera for us, but in order to have complete control over the camera's position and field of view and stuff like that, it's a good practice to uh, start on a scene with implementing our own camera. And for that, I opened up the 3 chairs documentation on the right, and you see that there is this perspective camera. And normally, you, you can also see that this is a class that needs to be uh, instantiated with uh, the new keyword we are also going to learn how we can use the probably most important component, which is called T, um, to implement basically any 3JS class. Let's first import and implement the camera as we would do with vanilla 3JS. And after that, we are going to use the T component to implement it the thread way and see uh, what the differences are. So uh, in the first step, I'm going to um, import the perspective camera from three. And to instantiate the camera, I would uh, use the new keyword to make a new perspective camera. You can also see that all, that, uh, all constructor arguments are optional. So just like that, I'm creating a new camera. Keep in mind that this camera is not part of our scene graph right now, so we would need to add it to the scene or to a parent object. And uh, we would also need to uh, somehow start rendering with that camera. Now let's see how we can implement a camera with Threlt. So first of all, I'm going to delete everything that I just did. And um, I am using the component T. To uh, make a new camera. And I will reference the class that I want to instantiate by dot notation. So I am using a dot perspective camera to tell the component T what it actually should, should uh, be. In this case, a perspective camera. By doing this, I not only instantiated a perspective camera, but I also added it to the scene graph. So this part of adding it to the scene or to a parent object is taken care of for me. So how would we start rendering with that camera then? Uh, because Threlt uh, creates a renderer for us, which automatically renders our scene, uh, we also need to tell it what camera to use. And we do that by using the property make default. So right now we are rendering our scene with this camera. 
Let's say we want to transform the camera to be at a different position. We can also use a property for that. In this case, we use the position property and we have to provide it three numbers, an array, a tuple of three numbers, x, y, and c. In this case, I'd set it to x0, y0, and c to 40. I'm just going to rearrange the windows here. Let's stop there for a second. Why can we use the property position on this component? And where does the prop type come from? At this point, it's important to note that this specific property position is not hardwired into the component T, but it is inferred from the class perspective camera that this component is instantiating. So if we have a look at the documentation of this perspective camera, you will see that the base class for it is the class camera, which is in turn derived from the class object 3D. On the class object 3D, you will find a property called position, which is of type vector3. Vector3 again is also a class with a method called set. And this method takes three arguments. And in this case, this resembles our tuple with three numbers, x, y, and c. So if there is a method called set on the value with the name of a certain component prop, it will be called with the values of the property. And if not, the property will be set as is. That's nearly all there is to it, and it sounds more complicated than it is. Let's change the field of view of the camera. We can use IntelliSense to check for available properties on the component, and we use the property FOV to change the field of view of our camera to 10 degrees. The camera is all set up, but we don't have anything in our scene yet. We're going to use the 3JS class Mesh to display an object in our scene. A 3JS mesh is comprised of a geometry and a material. The geometry being the shape and the material being the appearance of the object. We can make use of Threl's attach API to attach objects to a parent property. In this case, we are attaching a geometry to the property geometry of the parent object, which is a mesh. And we are attaching the mesh basic material to the property material of the parent, which is also the mesh. And that's what we end up with. It's not impressive, but it's a good start. And of course, this is not yet a ticket. That's where a software like Blender comes in. I prepared a model of a ticket how I imagined it. It's uh, partly shiny, which makes it resemble a film laminated surface. We can export that model to a GLB file, which is the current standard for files containing 3D models and even complete scenes. There are several ways to use this model in Threat, and I'd like to show you the newest entry. It's a CLI to transform a GLB model to a ready-to-use Threat component. For that, we navigate to our static directory and run the command npx at threat slash gltf. And because right now this tool is only available with the tag at next, we also have to provide that. Then we reference the GLB file we want to transform, and in this instance, we also want to generate TypeScript types, and that's why we also provide the flag T. And we see that the CLI transformed our GLB file into a ready-to-use thread component. The tool supports generating TypeScript types. It can automatically add props to render shadows. It can transform and compress the model for web use and much more. It's actually a pretty vital part in the thread ecosystem. When we have a look at the generated component, we see that it makes use of the hook use GLTF, a hook provided by the package Adthreld Extras. And we also see that it's a 3JS mesh, just like our cube, only that the geometry and the material are extracted from the passed and cached GLTF file. First, we copy the component to our source directory next to our C. Then we can use our ticket component just like any other Swell component. For that, we get rid of our cube and insert the ticket instead. When we check how our ticket looks like on our page, we will notice that it's not visible at all. That is because we don't have any light sources in our scene yet. 
We could, of course, add an ambient light or a directional light, but for this example, I'd like to use IBL, which stands for image-based lighting. This technique is mostly used to create realistic lighting, but we will use it to create really colorful and vibrant reflections. We insert a component called environment from the package thread extras and provide a path to an image from the static directory. This is the image I prepared, but uh, generally you just want to have a really colorful image. We're getting closer, but the lighting is too dim. Let's go to our ticket component and bump up the nth map intensity of the ticket's material. We do that with another trick that Throut has up its sleeve. We can use dot notation to access and set sub properties of properties. So we type material dot nth map intensity and we dial that up to 11. That already looks way better, but we could have also used a regular image for that. Let's add simple animations as well as the attendee's name and the ticket number. We start out with the attendee's name. For that, we go back to our scene and insert the text component from the package thread extras. We provide several properties, for example, the text that we want to display, the font file that we want to use, and we want to adjust the font size, make it a little bit bigger. And since this object is also positioned in 3D space, we also want to set the position of it. Now you have to fiddle around with that a little bit. I made measurements in Blender to get the correct position of the text. And to let the text wrap at new lines, we also have to set the property max width. In this case, I'm going to set it to 1.5. This already looks uh, pretty good, but we also see that the material's appearance is slightly different than the one from the ticket. Let's fix that. By default, the component text uses a mesh basic material, which does not react to image-based lighting. We can, however, use Threlt's Attach API to attach a new mesh standard material to our text. We instantiate a new mesh standard material with the T component and set the nth map intensity to 11. Also notice that we do not need to explicitly write out attach equals material because materials automatically attach to the parent's material property. Let's do that again with the ticket number. This time we move the text up and use a black mesh standard material without any roughness. We use the props anchor X and anchor Y to center the text. It's time for a simple animation. Thread provides a hook called useFrame that will run a callback on every frame. We can use that callback to alter a variable that will slowly rotate the ticket. Let's declare a variable called rotation y and set its initial value to zero. The callback of the hook use frame receives two arguments, the latter being the time since the last frame. We can use this number to adapt the speed of the rotation to different frame rates. We can now use the variable rotation y to rotate our ticket. There's one problem though, because the text elements and the ticket itself are different entities, we first have to group them. For that, again, we use the T component to instantiate a 3JS group and add the ticket as well as the text elements as children to it. Now we use the dot notation to rotate that group around the Y axis. That's better, but there are some things that still need work. For example, the attendee's name and the ticket number are only visible on one side of the ticket. Naturally, you would also add the labels on the back side of the ticket, but I rather only ever want to show the front side of the ticket. We add a check in our callback that subtracts 180 degrees if the rotation is greater than 90 degrees, so if the ticket side faces the camera. Therefore, only the front side of the ticket is visible. Next, we add some basic interaction. We do this by invoking the Threat plugin called Interactivity from Threat Extras. 
This allows us to use DOM-like event handling with thread components. I'd like to add an interaction where the ticket slightly scales up when we hover over it. Let's create a Svelte Spring Store with an initial value of 1. We create event handlers for the events pointer enter and pointer leave and set the spring values to 1.1 and 1. Note that we added the event handlers on the 3.js group, which doesn't have a visual representation. Thread supports event propagation similarly to how events propagate in the DOM. Next, we use the stores value to scale the group. And there we have it. Our digital ticket for the Thread Conference 2023. That's it for today's example. If you want to have a look at the source code, you can find it below. Also, feel free to check out the website for any updates on Thread 6 and uh, join our active Discord community where you can always find people that can help you with your project and that share their inspiring projects with you. We are also always looking for active maintainers and contributions. Thank you for listening and thank you to the members of the Svelte Society for organizing the summit and also thank you to the people behind Svelte itself for making such an awesome product.